Okay, I've got another 3D printer here. A knife. This is the Anycube i3 Mega. It's actually the older version without the sensor for bed leveling assistance. I've accepted a handful of 3D printers over the summer so I could learn about how they are made. This is the third one and by far the simplest to assemble. It's also the most rigid with a pre-assembled gantry and base section mainly fabricated out of steel. Okay, nice. Okay, dear customer, thank you very for choosing Anycube i3 Mega 3D printer. The user manual has been copied in the gifted SD card. Okay. Please just follow the assembly steps and the user guide to level and operate the printer. It is suggested to refer to the open box guide video via this link. Dump. Uh, please contact us on support at anycube3d.com or james <laughs> at anycube3d.com. It's personal there. Uh, if you have any questions about the product, have a nice day. Thanks for your support. Okay, thanks for the 3D printer. It's interesting what other parts are supplied with the machines. So you get some kinky surgeon gloves, uh, some snips and other things. USB cable. You've got another heating element here, which is nice. The TiVo came with an extra mechanism to extrude filament, while this one comes with a spare heating element. Hopefully that doesn't indicate what might break first. What is this in here? Oh, this must be for the spool. Flip this over. Just open this and have a look and make sure that none of the wires have popped out. Okay, it's a little metal, a bit of hot glue there to keep the uh, stepper wire motor on. There's a fan under here as well, it's looks like it's held onto a, a bracket. One, two, three, four, five. There's five stepper drivers. Got the SD card reader there, USB. All the power cables look okay. They're all in, they've got crimps. It's actually quite neat. Let's see if these are tight. Having all the electronics under the 3D printer is a great way to save space around the machine. The Tarantula and A8 had an exposed power supply unit without an on off switch, which doesn't feel particularly safe. All right, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna put that back. Okay, I've just noticed something weird. The grill doesn't carry on onto this section here, which blocks the fan. And it's actually really close to the fan as well. Put it that way around. Well, it doesn't go this way around, it definitely goes that way around because the holes line up. I'm not sure. I'm going to put it back together because it's not going to touch onto the metal. It's not going to really be drawing any air from anywhere. Really, that needs to be drilled out. I should have really checked that the case is connected to earth, but I can do that later with a voltmeter. Okay, I'm gonna turn this on. I plugged it in. I made sure that I switched the right voltage for the area that I'm in, which is 230, 240, although this is 220. Hello. The wire to the limit switch pulled out as the bed moved backwards, so I had to put that back in, making sure it was actually out of the way. To make sure this is outside the cables going into the terminal set, like that. Bum, bada, bum, bum. 
I built in physical pause, abort and emergency stop buttons into the controller for my CNC machine, but none of the 3D printers I received have such things on them. Okay, this has to be the coolest thing. The pattern on the spool. So when you cut your pier leg, cut it with a really sharp angle and it will help it get into the uh, Bowden extruder. I tried to install bed levelling on the A8 and tarantula with varying success. To be honest, levelling by hand was simpler and in retrospect, because I am recording this voiceover some time after having received the printer, I've been getting some really good prints. There's definitely a bend in this and actually the thing that really is disappointing and the reason why there is a bend because there's two linear bearings on this side but only one on this side here so when I'm tightening the uh, nail knobs on the left hand side I'm actually bending this piece of metal it's wrong, that's 2 mil. it's actually like 1.7 Shut up. Okay, so this one's the Annette A8. So that's three mil. So you've got two mil, three mil. And this one's the Tivo Tarantula. That's three mil as well. Those two have three mil aluminium heat beds. This one has two mil with a very thick piece of glass on top. The bend is on the metal plate under the glass. The glass seems to be okay to be fair. Okay I've played around with it a bit more and I think I've got it about as level as I can possibly get it. We're going to try print um, one of the SCL files that was pre-saved on the, on the SD card that came with this uh, machine. I mean, I have to admit, it does look like a nice um, machine, but I feel like with all three of these, especially, I guess it's because of the price range, you will seem to notice where the cost saving features are. You know, like they're missing one of this or they're using a lesser quality of that. I'm printing a sample STL file which came with the 3D printer. <coughs> It is either a model of Godzilla's feet or two owls. It's actually two owls. Okay, so that is the Anycube i3 Mega. That is the third Prusa style 3D printer that I've assembled over the summer. They all have their pros and cons, but this one is by far the best in terms of its rigidity and ease of assembly. This is the older version without the sensor to assist with bed levelling, but I'm pleasantly surprised with the print quality. Ok, I've actually poured one off, it's down to 42 degrees. That's really not bad. Let's turn this off. Bit of webbing on the top here, and it is. So, Lady Owl has a flower on her head, and Man Owl. has a hat, oh, top hat. But you can tell the machine is really sturdy because you, 
you don't get any weird artifacts uh, from the vibrations during the print. I'm not sure how fast that was printing because of the um, it was on the SD card. Probably could have checked if I went through the menu a bit more. Um, I think I'm going to send these to the Owl Museum in Larnaca. Uh, if you've been following me on Instagram, you know I went out there with my partner for a couple of weeks. Cyprus is where my family originally from. Um, we did a sort of trek around a few different places. And we found this museum in Larnaca, which is a private collection uh, of thousands and thousands of our effigies and uh, I think the couple who it belongs to, well I think it belongs to the wife, we went in the morning and the husband sort of turned us away, he wasn't interested and told us to come back in the evening when his wife was around and she let us in to have a look and they were quite amazing um, collection really, quite odd as well but uh, but I've got the dress. It's very difficult to find this place. So uh, they're going to get a little uh, surprise in the post. Okay, I'm just going to check if the earth is connected to the uh, rest of the enclosure. So that is the earth under there. So the power supply is. Just doing the USB. Obviously the paint is uh, not conductive, but if I find something like the um, machine screws, they're fine. Bowden is, so that's, that's a good sign. Um, I suspect this would pass a pat test if, uh, if it had to. And the reason you want the enclosure to be connected to Earth is if it became live, it would trip the system and it would prevent you from being electrocuted.